Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel! If you're new here, my name is Medita and today I am definitely not showing you all books that I definitely did not buy while being on a book buying hand because I would definitely never break my book buying ban. Yeah, I mean, surprise, haha, I'm so funny. I actually do have a book haul for all of you today. And I was doing so well, okay? I was on a book buying ban, I think from like end of April till now. So like, did I technically break a book buying ban? Yes, but also was I doing so well that this is kind of like a reward? Also, yes, this is okay, guys. I'm definitely not just justifying this for myself in my bank account. Yeah, okay, let me literally just show you all now how I've been spending my money recently. Okay, the first book I have all of you today here is <laughs> A Curse for True Love by Stephanie Garber! I am so excited for this book, but also so scared. This is the third and final installment in the Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy, and the fear I'm feeling right now is undescribable. I have no idea what will happen in this book. I have not heard any spoilers, which I'm very happy about. But after, you know, the cliffhanger and the ending of the second book, I don't trust Stephanie Garber anymore. Me and her, we're not on the same wavelength right now. I feel like she will want to break my heart in this book, and I don't think I'm ready for that. I really don't think I'm ready for that. Yeah, if you've not read Once Upon a Broken Heart, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing with your life? You need to read it right now. I'm forcing you to read it. It's a lot to read this series, okay? Because why do you want to miss out on Evangeline and Jax, the it couple of the century? So if you haven't read the series, I obviously cannot read to you this blurb, but I can tell you what the series is about because the series is about Evangeline Fox and Jax. Um, Evangeline currently is in love with another man and she wants to stop the wedding of this other man. And to do that, she makes a bet or like a deal with Jax. But Jax obviously just doesn't want to help out this random girl because of his amazing loving heart. No, he obviously wants something in return and he wants in return three kisses. And she's like, okay, whatever, sure, I'll give you three kisses. Starting with that deal, everything unravels. Like, there's so many secrets and mysteries and past experiences and le gasp moments and tension and love. There's everything in this book, so you will need to read it. I mean, it also says here on the back, blood will be shed, hearts will be stolen, and true love will be put to the test. What are you talking about, Stephanie? What are you trying to tell me? Are you trying to tell me this book has a sad ending? I'm not excited. Ooh, okay, the second book is also a book I'm very excited for, obviously, and that is Love Redesigned by Lauren Asher! I've had my ups and downs with Lauren Asher's. My ups being redeemed, my downs being terms and conditions, you know? But I feel like Love Redesigned will be an amazing book, not only because Michaela told me it will be an amazing book, and I do trust my friend Michaela, but also because the cover is purple. And you know what else is purple? Redeemed. And you know who else has an R in their title? Redeemed. Redesigned. Redeemed. I feel like Lauren Asher is giving me a message with this cover and this title, and she's telling me, if you love Redeemed, you will love Love Redesigned. Now, Love Redesigned is about Julian and Dahlia. Julian and Dahlia are everything but friends. They were childhood rivals because they're very competitive and their moms are best friends, but they never really liked each other. But now in the present time, Julian is a billionaire and Dahlia is an interior designer. Now, Dahlia, however, is currently going through a lot of things because she was engaged to someone, but then that someone said, mm, you know what, I actually don't wanna be engaged to you anymore, bye-bye, and then they left. So now Dahlia is sad. And I am sad because Dahlia is sad. So we are wondering how her sadness will be taken away. And that is where Julian comes into play because Dahlia is going back to her hometown and Julian is in that hometown, obviously. Now, Julian doesn't really want to help Dahlia, but then his mother kind of guilt trips him into, you know, making Dahlia feel a little bit happier. So Julian decides to propose to Dahlia. Not propose, you know, not like, oh, but like propose a deal because he wants to apparently renovate this house in the town. And then he asks Dahlia if she wants to help because Dahlia is an interior designer and she says yes. So what do we have? Forced proximity, tension, broken off engagement, and rivals to lovers. And maybe in the end with an actual proposal, not just the proposal of the deal. So I'm really excited about this book and I, I really do hope I will love this book. Oh, the next book I have here is a very tiny book as you can tell. And that is My Life Had Stood a Loaded Gun by Emily Dickinson. Now this is a collection of very dark and very sad poems and I am very sad all the time. So I feel like this is literally made for me. It says on the back here that these poems are written about isolation, beauty, death, and eternity. <laughs> Will I cry while reading these poems? Probably, but I'm excited for it because I love crying. Ooh, okay, the next book I have here is Powerless by Lauren Roberts. Now this book is about Elia, and she lives in this world where there's the elites and the ordinaries. Now the elites are people that have like superpowers apparently, and they can, I don't know, control water, do cool 
cool avatar tricks. I have no idea, but apparently they have powers. And then there's the ordinaries. Now, who would ever want to be called ordinary? I don't really know who, but not me. But she's an ordinary, which means she doesn't have any cool powers and she cannot control water. How boring, bland, and average, and meh can that be? Honestly, I don't know if I could live as an ordinary, but Elia also doesn't because Elia is a dirty liar and a cheat. And because why? Because Elia actually poses as an elite. She pretends she has psychic abilities to live in the town where all the elites live, which is honestly so cool of her. How good of an actor do you have to be to pretend to have superpowers? I love her for that, you know? But the tension really starts rising in this book when Elia apparently accidentally saves one of the princes named Kai. And now because of that, the attention is on her and she is put in the purge trials. That literally sounds so scary, okay? And apparently in those purging trials, the elites have to showcase their powers. Now, as you remember, Elia is actually not an elite. She's an ordinary, she doesn't have any powers. So she's in this weird competition where she has to show her abilities, which means she just has to lie. I do really wonder what type of secrets this world has because there has to be something. Maybe Elia in the end has secret superpowers she never really knew she had, we, we don't know. But we will find out when I read this book. Oh, the next book I have here is a book with the longest title ever because this book is called By Grand Central Station, I Sat Down and Wept. I mean, I don't really sit down at the central station to cry, but I do cry a lot, so I feel like this is for me. But yeah, this book is apparently about the grandest, most scandalous affair ever because this is about a girl named Elizabeth and a man named George. Elizabeth and George fall in love, but George has a wife and he will not leave his wife for Elizabeth, but Elizabeth apparently bears George four children. And then this is the story about that? Oh, it just sounds like I will sit down and weep and I will cry. So I'm very excited for this, okay? Ooh, okay, so next I have a book that is literally only here because it's Christmas and that is The Penguin Book of Christmas Stories. This is literally a collection of the most famous Christmas stories out there and I bought it because the cover is just the cutest thing I've ever seen. The little trees, oh, and it's cloth bound. I love it. And and I definitely do want to read this before the 24th. Why did I say it like that? I definitely want to read this before it's the 24th. So I'll probably be reading this throughout next week. I want to get into the Christmas mood and this book will literally make me feel like I am Christmas. So I'm excited. Uh, so the next book I have here is called Party Girls Die in Pearls. The reason I bought this is because I was surfing on Meaty Mops, you know, and I was just looking at some cool books to buy. And then I saw this title and I was like, this title is the most amazing title I've ever read in my entire life. What do you mean Party Girls Die in Pearls? And then I read the back and it just became even cooler because this is about Ursula and it plays in Oxford in 1985. Basically what happens is some beautiful girl gets killed. Ursula is on a mission to find out what actually happened that night and why some random girl was killed. So she teams up with a girl named Nancy Feingold. Now Nancy Feingold, what name does that remind me of? Nancy Drew. Like, do you see where I'm getting here? These are literally detectives. And on their way to trying to solve this murder, they get swept into this world of black tie parties, sex and secrets. I, I don't know how to explain this, but this sounds like a story where you kind of uncover the secrets of the elites of a university in Oxford. And honestly, just the premise of the story tells me that there's gonna be a lot of drama in this book. And I'm very excited for drama because I love drama. Okay, now the next two books are actually part of a series and that series is Truly Devious. And I think this is book two and this is book three in that series. Now, if you like A Good Girl's Got to Murder, I feel like these books will be right up your alley because this series is also about a girl who is trying to investigate murders. Now, Stevie actually only decided to go to Ellingham Academy because she wanted to solve this never solved crime that was committed there. Because in 1936, there was a triple murder at the school. What do you even mean? And the killer was never caught? The drama, the tension. I am scared. Yeah, and now Stevie's at that school and she's trying to solve that cold case, but at the same time, someone else get murdered at the school and it's apparently the same killer. I mean, come on, murder at a boarding school with mysterious letters, crimes and riddles. What's not to love? The next book I have here is also, I, I guess kind of like a sequel of a book I've already read and loved, and that is House of Roots and Ruin. This is in the same universe as House of Salt and Sorrows, and I read that in a 24 hour reading vlog. Someone actually commented on that video and said that there's a sequel, so I had to buy it. The sequel is actually about the youngest sister of this family because, oh, uh, I don't think I can say anything about this book without spoiling House of Salt and Sorrows. 
So basically all I can really say is that this universe is about 12 sisters that are cursed and apparently every single one is destined to die a gruesome death. And in the first book, one of the sisters is trying to investigate this curse and trying to, you know, make it go away so her sisters don't die, obviously. And on her way to uncover this curse and trying to solve these problems, she reveals so many dark secrets from their past and so many present secrets. And now this book is about the youngest sister named Verity. I know, I have to think of Colleen Hoover when I read that name. And apparently Verity cannot differentiate real people from ghosts and that really messes with her life, which is understandable, honestly. And yeah, that's, that's basically about her. It's her and her ghosts. The next book I have here is another thriller. How shocking! And that is In My Dreams I Hold a Knife. So this book is about six friends who meet again at a college reunion 10 years after someone was murdered at the college. What a premise, what a story, what a mystery. And the main character of this book, Jessica, is ready to find out what happened six years ago. And then at that college reunion, a lot of secrets are brought up, a lot of mysteries are trying to be solved. And I'm guessing we're gonna find out who the murderer is of the girl that was murdered 10 years ago. And I'm excited. I always love books like this where we have a lot of main characters from the beginning because I like to pick and choose who I think the murderer is before even reading anything. I'm usually wrong, but it's still a fun experience, you know? I'm excited about every single one of these books, but next we have Stone Blind by Natalie Hines, which is Medusa's story. I think this book is going to be a very interesting take on Medusa's legend because Medusa is often seen as a villain. I mean, look at the Percy Jackson movies without even fully explaining Medusa's backstory and that she's actually a victim of Poseidon. Like that makes Percy Jackson even darker in my opinion. Basically, Poseidon did something very, 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 very dark to Medusa. And then for some reason, Medusa gets punished by Athena. And now she has, you know, the snakes on her head and cannot look at anyone without turning them into a stone. And I think this book is basically about everything that happens post Athena turning Medusa and her trying to actually save her sisters from the curse that she's suffering under. And it also says in the back here, this is apparently a feminist exploration of female rage, which just makes a lot of sense. I feel like Medusa is the definition of female rage because of everything that happened to her and her still being made the villain of the story. And I really hope that this story really shows that Medusa isn't the villain of her own story, but that Poseidon is actually Next, I have another fantasy book, and that is One Dark Window by Rachel Gillick. So this book is about Elspeth Spindle, who lives in this kingdom that is apparently very dangerous and very dark, and the only way that she can survive is by having a monster protect her. And this monster is called Nightmare. So we already know this book is going to be scary. But one day, Elspeth meets a mysterious highwayman, and together they try to find a cure for the curse that has fallen over this kingdom, and they're trying to fight back against all these monsters that are taking over the kingdom of Blunder. I am very scared about this because I have no idea if Nightmare, that monster, is actually good or bad, because if they're trying to free this kingdom from monsters, does that mean Nightmare is also a bad monster because I thought he was protecting her? I don't know, I'm confused, but also excited. It also says here that Elspeth needs a monster and then it says the monster might be her. The drama, the tea, the darkness. I'm excited. Next, I bought this book called Fates and Furies and this book doesn't really have a blurb, only a couple sentences. So I think I'm just gonna read these sentences to you because I feel like you will understand then why I bought this book. Every story has two sides, every relationship has two perspectives, and sometimes it turns out the key to a great marriage is not its truth, but its secrets. What are you talking about? I feel like this book is literally just about divorce and the secrets that people have in their marriages, which sounds very exciting, honestly, but also very scary, because I'm hoping these secrets aren't affairs. This book will probably destroy me, and I love that for this book. Ooh, the next book I bought is actually the first hardcover in this video, and that is Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke. So this is actually a collection of three horror stories, and I do love myself a little horror story every now and then, so I'm very excited for this, because it says here that one of the horror stories actually has to do with a chat room and two girls that succumb to their most horrific desires. I'm scared and terrified, but then the next story terrifies me even more because it's about a couple who isolates themselves on a remote island in an attempt to recover from their teenage son's death when somehow a person knocks on their door. What do you mean? I thought they were supposed to be alone. Is it a ghost? And then the third story is about a man who discovers that his neighbor has strange objects in his backyard. 
in my head all I can think about now is dead bodies. How lovely and exciting and how beautiful. You know, I feel like the story will bring me a lot of happiness and joy. And then shockingly, I have another horror story and that is called The Castle of Ort Toronto by Horace Walpole. So this book is about this prince called Manfred who's very very scared of this ancient prophecy and after his son actually dies on his wedding day he for some reason now wants to marry his dead son bride. <coughs> if I feel like I'm not gonna like Manfred and then because this man just randomly wants to marry this girl she decides to flee through a castle riddled with secret passages. And this is apparently where the mystery and the horror and the scariness comes into play because that castle is haunted. I don't know what will happen, but I do hope that the girl survives and that Manfred dies. That rhymed, I'm literally a poet. The next book I have here is actually, I think, kind of a dark academia book, and that is called A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. And that cover is it again. So pretty! So this book is about Effie who's obsessed with this one author and this one book by this author because he's apparently an amazing writer and that book is the only thing that's keeping her afloat right now during the first semester at university. During his her first semester she actually finds out that the family of the deceased author is having a contest to redesign the author's old house. So Effie is obviously like um, I'm obsessed with this author and his books why don't I literally redesign his house and enter this contest? But she's not the only one who's obsessed with this author. There's another guy and his name is Preston. Now Preston is a young literature student and he is determined to prove that his favorite author is a fraud. I don't really know why you would do that but maybe he's bored, I don't know. So these rival students are now on a quest to win this contest but it says also here that that house is not a normal house. There are dark forces and magic in this castle and now they don't only have to deal with this contest and the fact that they have a rival, but they also have to somehow fight against these dark forces and the magic that is conspiring against them. I love myself a little competition in a book and a little bit about rivals to lovers romance story. So I'm very excited for this. Do I have an idea if this is a standalone? No. Ooh, then the next book I have here is actually about a bookstore and that is called Days at the Morisaki Bookshop. From the back, I know that this is just literally a story about a bookstore and a family and happiness and love, which sounds like something I need in my life after all these sad books I'm constantly reading, you know? I think in the story, the main character actually just lives at the bookstore and then she encounters many different worlds and maybe even figures out that the bookstore is a little bit magical. I don't know, that just sounds like such a heartwarming and sweet story. So I'm very, very excited about this. And also the cover is yet again, absolutely gorgeous. Then I have for all of you yet again, another thriller and that is How to Kill Your Family. That title seems a little bit concerning if you ask me, but I mean, come on, who doesn't love a little bit of a dark, scary thriller? The reason I bought this is because of this one quote on the back and that says, they say you can't choose your family, but you can kill them. <laughs> um, that already tells me enough about this book. I am extremely terrified and excited at the same time. I feel like this book is going to be filled with female rage and I love female rage in books. So I'm just super, super, super excited. It says it's dark and twisted. So I'm very excited for this dark and twisted book. Then I have for all of you here, four more Greek mythology books and I'm just gonna show them all together because I don't know I feel like I showed they're all mythology books so it makes sense. Um, number one is the Penelopead. So this book is about Penelope who is Odysseus wife. Now Penelope is kind of forgotten in comparison to Odysseus so this is her story which I'm very excited about and it says on the back here that she is currently in the underworld because she she died. That sounds so sad, honestly. And now that Penelope's in the underworld, she is spinning her own side of the story. So what I'm guessing is that we will read about her marriage with Odysseus from her perspective. And it says here that it's a tale of lust, greed and murder. So I'm just excited because I feel like there will be a little bit of a mystery in here and maybe a plot twist and maybe a lot of Lugas moments. I love myself, a little Greek mythology story about the forgotten women. And then the next Greek mythology book I have here is Atalanta. Atalanta, I think that's how you pronounce it. And this story is about Atalanta who was actually thrown out as an infant by her father, the king of Arcadia. And as a result of that, she was raised by bears. She always knew who her father was because she is raised under the protective eye of another goddess named Artemis and now she wants to prove herself and prove that she's worthy of being a Greek hero so she decides to join Jason's bands of Argonauts. Now Argonauts are usually men so in the story she 
is just trying to prove herself against all these men and prove that she can also be a very good female Argonaut. And I'm just very excited about that, honestly. I feel like this book will include a lot of female rage yet again. And I love that. And the next book I have here then for all of you is The Wolf Den, which is a story about a girl who became a slave in Pompeii and is now trying to fight for her freedom. Amara apparently is just a very, very strong-willed character whose spirit is never broken. And while Amara is trying to free herself, she actually finds out that everything in Pompeii has its price. And I feel like this will take a very, very dark turn and I'm very scared of that. I don't really wanna know what the price of her freedom is. I'm scared, but also very intrigued of the story and I'm, I'm just hoping that this book will have a happy ending and that I won't cry. But what I do feel like this book will 100% make me is angry and mad. So yeah, how exciting. And then the last mythology book I have for all of you here today is The Witch's Heart by Genevieve Gornishek. I in general think that the history behind all the witch trials is very interesting and also just so dark and gruesome. So stories about that I always love. Now this is actually the story of a witch named Angraboda and it begins with the burning of a witch where she loses all of her powers and now hurting and broke she flees from her old home and actually finds a man who reveals himself to be Loki. Now Loki and her do the devil's tango and proceed to produce three children. And these children all have secret powers and abilities and destinies. And now basically Angraboda has to choose between two different things. Either she can protect the three children or she can rise and remake her own story. And yeah, I kind of just hope that she's able to change her own future, but also change the destiny of her family. That would obviously be the best outcome. Do I believe that will happen though? Absolutely not. And I'm terrified that this book will have a sad ending, but I do love myself a sad book every now and then. Then the next book I have for all of you here today is called The Cheerleaders by Cara Thomas, and this is a YA thriller. Does this book give me Pretty Little Liars vibes? Yes. Do I love Pretty Little Liars? Yes. Am I excited for this then? Yes. So this book is about a girl named Monica who's currently trying to solve her older sister's murder. Basically what happened is that five years ago, all cheerleaders for some reason were murdered. And because of that, Monica's sister was murdered as well. And now in the present time, Monica is finding some clues and letters that have something to do with those murders. And because of these letters, Monica's world is apparently starting to unravel. I don't know what's in these letters, but I feel like it's gonna be very dark and scary. And yeah, I'm just honestly very excited to see what type of secrets this town has because most of the times if it's like a small town murder a lot of people are involved and I'm, I'm very scared to find out what happened especially because apparently Monica's stepfather is involved and that just sounds like I will want to throw up while reading this book who doesn't love that you know Ooh, the next book I have here has the yellowest cover of all yellowest covers out there, and that is Yellow Face Bar of Kuang. So this book is actually about two authors named June and Athena. June and Athena are best friends, but June is actually very, very jealous of Athena because Athena's stories are selling very well versus June's stories who are currently flopping. But then one random day, she witnesses Athena's murder, and for some reason, June then just says, well, you know, I know Athena was writing a book, so let me now just steal it and say it's mine, because why wouldn't I do that? And what I'm wondering is how the heck June thought that would be a good idea without any consequences. How do you think your life would be after stealing your best friend's story? Like, I don't understand. And yeah, then this book is just basically about June's experiences afterwards and how the consequences are destroying her life and how she can never escape Athena's shadow. So yeah, this just sounds like a very dark thriller where for some reason I think that June will have a screaming crying panic attack at some point. And I'm just excited to see that because in my head, June is already the villain, and this is the villain's story. The next book I have here is called Paul Takes the Form of a Myrtle Girl, and I bought this because the cover is like the prettiest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, now, this book is about a man named Paul who is a shapeshifter and can change into any body that he wants to be. He only does that for one reason, because he wants to find love. And yeah, I honestly think that this story is then just about a main character who's trying to find his own place in the world and trying to find out who he is and who he loves and what purpose he has in life maybe even. And that just honestly sounds so good. I really love coming of age stories, especially if they're set in different times because this is set in 1993. It really just sounds like a very interesting story and I'm just very excited about this, but I do feel like it will honestly destroy all my happiness. 
And then the next book I have here is a book I bought solely because of the cover. And that is Nothing Special by Nicole Flattery. Basically, this is about a girl named May who lives in a rundown apartment with her alcoholic mom. And she's honestly just trying to make money right now to survive. And then one random day, she's actually offered the coolest job ever. And that is that she's hired as a typist for the artist Andy Warhol. Come on now, like, where do you get this type of job? How lucky do you have to be? Um, Warhol is currently composing a novel about his life and his conversations with his friends. But while she's actually typing out this book for Andy Warhol, she befriends one of Andy's friends named Shelley. And while May and Shelley start exploring their sexuality and womanhood with each other, May actually becomes extremely, extremely obsessed with the tapes that she records to make this book. And then basically throughout this entire story, May struggles with remaining her own person and her own self. Stories about identity and finding yourself are always very interesting. So I really wonder how May will deal with this identity loss that she's feeling. I, I, I really feel like this is going to be very sad. And next, I actually have another story about finding yourself in an identity crisis. And that is Just By Looking At Him by Ryan O'Connell. And this is a book about Elliot who is basically living, as he says, the gay dream. Basically, he has a boyfriend, a job, and the perfect member. I'm not joking, that's literally what it says on the back here, okay? But on the inside, Elliot's life is actually just chaos because he hates his job, he's cheating on his boyfriend, and he doesn't like his body and he thinks he looks like Shrek. What else can go wrong in the story, if you ask me? I have no idea. And yeah, since Elliot is basically going through this identity crisis, he's now trying to find himself in this world again, while also redeeming himself because he has been doing some things that he's not very proud of, like cheating on his boyfriend. So yeah, again, this sounds like a very exciting coming of age finding yourself story and I love stuff like that. So why not? The next book I have here is actually a book where I'm very confused about the plot and that is called The Vegetarian by Han Khan. This is a book, as it says on the back here, about sexuality, madness, and rebellion. Sounds amazing if you ask me, but then when you actually go to the real blurb, you get really confused because this is a story about a couple where the wife suddenly one day stops eating meat. And because she stops eating meat, her life becomes a thrilling psychological drama. <laughs> How does that even happen? I'm vegetarian myself. Does she meet a different type of meat, if you know what I'm saying? I'm confused, but scared and terrified at the same time and excited. The next book I have here is yet again a story of witches, and that is The Witches of Vardo by Anya Bergman. And this is a story I think told out of many different perspectives because there's so many main characters on the back. There's a woman named Zigri who is currently embarking on a doomed affair with a merchant. And because of that, she's now trialed as a witch, which is so random. Then there's her daughter who's trying to save her from the witch trials who also has a friend who is a witch. And then there's Anna Rodios, who is the king's mistress. And she's also sent onto the island of Vardo to be trialed as a witch because she's apparently a disgrace to society. What? This is basically a story about these witches suffering and then these witches overcoming their suffering and then these witches fighting back and getting revenge. I hope they are actually witches and that they can use magic. And you know, Avada Kedavra. The next book I have here sounds like it's almost like a dystopian novel of today's world. And that book is called I'm a Fan by Sheena Patel. And this is about a woman who is currently stalking the lover of the man she's in love with. And yeah, this book basically then just explores the ideas behind obsession, love, and also power dynamics. It doesn't feel like it's yet stalker level, but it's very close to being stalkerish. It sounds scary and I'm excited and it sounds weird and confusing and it sounds like I will be disturbed. And what's not to love about that? And uh, then I have another book here that I bought because of a certain book prize that they won, which has never happened. And that is Another Brooklyn by Jacqueline Woodson. So this book plays in Brooklyn, as the title says, and it's about four girls who used to be the best of friends, but because of certain reasons, they now don't talk with each other anymore and their friendships fell apart. Now, those reasons are apparently very dark, as I can tell from the back, because it says here that one of the reasons is grown men reaching for innocent girls. And I'm pretty sure this book has a sad ending because it starts off with them being friends and it ends with them not being friends anymore. And I am honestly terrified. This is another sad book I bought because I can't stop buying sad books. 
And then the next book I bought is called Jazz. And the blurb of this book was so disturbing that I just had to put it in my card and I had to buy it because let me literally just read to you the back. It's, you guys are gonna be like, what the heck is this book about? This book is about a man named Joe who is in his 50s and he for some reason shoots his lover of three months and then at the funeral of this 18 year old girl his wife Violet tries to defigure the dead body of the 18 year old with a knife. And that's the blurb! That's the blurb! What are you talking about? This sounds so disturbing, honestly. I thought by the title of this book would be about music. Like, I thought it would be about jazz, you know? And apparently it is about music, like a little bit at least, but in correlation to this extremely weird romance. And then the next book I bought is called The Hero of This Book by Elizabeth McCracken. And I love her last name, McCracken. And this book is sad, point blank period, I know it. Because this book is actually about a woman who is currently debating if she should write a story about her relationship with her mother 10 months after her mother died. Yeah, this honestly sounds very interesting and just like a very beautiful portrayal of daughterhood and just womanhood in general and even mother-daughter relationships. And I just love reading books about mother-daughter relationships because I feel like there's always so much love and sadness and sometimes even hatred involved. And it, oh, I feel like I will cry. I've said that so many times now in this video, I really wonder how often I said crying and sad in this video. Now the next books I have here are all classics. So I'm just gonna show them all together again because I don't think a lot of people are interested in this section of the video. So let me just show them all really quickly. First things first, we have Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky. Dostoevsky. Dostoevsky? I've wanted to read this actually for a while and recently someone on my TikTok actually commented that because I don't like modern romances that I'm a crime and punishment lover and I haven't read crime and punishment so now I feel like I have to read it and I also I do like modern romance stories just for your information. Do I have any idea what this book is about? No. Am I scared and intimidated? Yes. Then the next classic I bought is actually just another copy of Hamlet by Shakespeare. I don't know why I buy so many editions of the same book. I love stories about revenge. And this play is a definition of revenge. So why would I not want to have multiple copies of this? And then I got a collection of short little classics. First one is A Terrible Beauty is Born, which is a story that starts off joyful and happy and turns dark and scary. And it's about youth and hope and sacrifice. Yeah! That's literally all it says on the back here. It's made out of poems and you know what I said about poetry. Sometimes I want to be a little bit mysterious and this book will make me feel mysterious. Then the next small book I got is The Meek One by Fyodor Dostoevsky. And The Meek One is based in St. Petersburg and it's a searing tale of a man who drives his wife to I do like stories that are about mental health problems that I have myself. So why not read this book? Oh, and then this short book I know will destroy me because it's called Letter to My Mother and this is basically just a confessional letter of a son to his dead mother and it explores the complexity of mother-child relationships and ah, this will break me, I already know. I already know and who is not excited about breaking themselves every now and then? And then the next classic I got, or like, I don't know if this is just a historical romance or a classic, I really don't know, but it's called Cousin Kate and it's by Georgette Hare. This is a story about a girl named Kate and she is currently living with her aunt and she finds her aunt's home life very random and very weird because her uncle lives in one wing of the house, her aunt in another one, the son in another one. It seems like their family is not very close and very loving and Kate is trying to find out why the family is like this and is also very confused about why Minerva, her aunt, actually just took her in to live with them. And while she's actually trying to confide to her cousin, she finds out that there's a lot more behind her aunt's generosity. And why does that sound mysterious and cool and maybe even like a story about inheritance? I don't know, but I feel like money's involved in this book and I, I love that, so I'm very, very excited! And then the last classic I have here for all of you today is called Meditations by Marcos Aurelius. And this is actually just a collection of works by Marcos Aurelius, who's a Roman emperor. I've had my fair share of experiences with old philosophy books because of my Latin classes and me having to translate that stuff a lot. So why not for once read it actually in English instead of in Latin, you know? Why not for once make it easy for me? And that's what this book is. Me having an easy time while reading philosophy and not having to translate Latin every two seconds. 
And then we have four more last books that are the ones that I'm least excited about. Those books are the Magnolia Park series. Yay! Now, no hate to the Magnolia Parks lovers. I had lots of my friends actually love this series. I just never really thought I would read the series, but a couple of weeks ago, I was in the bookstore with Vanessa and we saw that the old covers still existed. And so we thought, why not buy these books? Why not own the old covers and then read them? So that's what I did because I actually dislike the new covers, but the old covers I've always found them very pretty and intriguing but I was always very intimidated by the story because I'm like I don't know if I will like this or not I'm a bit scared I don't know like the premise sounds so good like gossip girl hello why not but then also I heard there's a lot of like cheating in here and I don't like cheating so it's like will I like these will I not like these we don't know until I will read them and now I have them so now I have to read them and yeah those are the last books in my haul this is a very long haul as I just realized in the video is probably extremely long. I think I've been sitting here for two hours. And yeah, I hope you still enjoyed this video. And if you did, you can do a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of my content, you can subscribe. Tell me what your most recent book purchase was because I just want to know what type of books you guys buy. And I also think that I will not be buying any more books before the year's over. I mean, the year only has 12 days left. So how hard can it be to not buy any new books in that time span? Thank you again so much for watching today's video. I hope you all have a great day, evening, nighttime, morning, whatever time zone you're in. I hope you enjoy yourself. Go read a book. And if you own any of these books, and if any of these books are on your TBR, you should read them right now. Again, thank you so much for watching this video. Have a great day. Happy reading and see you next time.